It's wonderful to be with all of you. I listen to your intro and I go, who is this person? I'm not sure I know who this person is. <laughs> anyway, it's great to be with you and, and happy to see my friend Steve and Aileen and David here from Unity of Berkeley and also part of our community at Unity of Richmond. I love speaking with this church. I love all of you, Unity Santa Rosa, and can't wait till we can all be together again. Um, have to take my face off the screen. It's a little disconcerting talking to yourself. Um, so Persephone and Demeter, I, I've been teaching a course that I was trained to teach in India. And one of the stories that we use in the, in the course is the story of Persephone and Demeter. And I never, you know, I kind of knew the story, but I really didn't know the story. And the more I got into it, I thought, this is a really beautiful story for us to look at right now in our life and, and begin to understand, you know, it's a myth. It's a, it's a Grecian myth, you know, supposedly coming out centuries and centuries ago. Uh, they call it part of the Homeric hymn. And nobody really knows if Homer wrote it or it was written by some of the epic poets from Greece. It could be 6,000 centuries 6th century BC or even earlier than that, that this was actually written. So it really predates Christianity and all the teachings that we are so connected to in our unity wisdom and unity tradition of metaphysics. But at the same time, being a myth, it gives us that same kind of juiciness of understanding that we have when we look at things from the metaphysical perspective that Charles Fillmore and Myrtle Fillmore have gifted us with as unity students. So I thought it would be really um, an adventure with you to explore the myth of Persephone and Demeter and see how it applies to your life and my life today. For me, there is no other reason to be present to these stories, to the myths, to the teachings that we have in unity if they're not actively working in our life. We know that's the fifth principle of unity, isn't it? to know these things and to not yet experience and incorporate them in our life, we might as well not know that we're one with the presence of God. That through our thoughts, our thinking, our feeling nature, we create the world that we live in. If we don't experience it, it's just a nice concept. So I invite you as I go through this, um, this story and as we explore it a little deeper, I invite you to really look in your own life. If we were in the room together, I would be asking you questions, but I think on Zoom that's a little challenging for, for our service. So I'm going to just invite you to reflect in your own life how this story might impact you. So there are several versions of the story and I'm gonna kind of give you a, a, a bit of a shortened version of the story. Demeter, or Demeter, depending on how you pronounce it, was, we can think of her as like rep, the goddess representing Mother Earth. She was supposedly married to Zeus, the god of the heavens. And Zeus's brother was Hades, the god of the underworld. They were brothers. So set that into your stage. Um, Demeter and Zeus had a beautiful daughter, and her name was Persephone. She was very, very attractive. Everyone loved her. She had a very light spirit. Mother and daughter were very closely bound together. And what transpired was that Zeus's brother Hades was very attracted to Persephone and wanted to take her as his wife and made a deal, Hades made a deal with his brother Zeus that he was going to marry Persephone, the daughter. So Demeter was not excited about this at all. She was very bound to her daughter, very connected to her beautiful daughter, Persephone, and did not think this was a good idea for Persephone to marry Hades, the god of the underworld. But Hades, being a sly one, Hades tricked Persephone. What happened was she was out picking flowers in the garden with her friends one day, and this very, very beautiful flower emerged. It was a narcissus. Put that in your mind. What is a narcissus? Think about what narcissism is. It was a narcissus. She looked at it and she couldn't resist and went down to pick it up. And as she went to pick it up, the earth opened, Hades came and pulled her through this chasm in the earth. And down she went, down Persephone went into the underworld. 
Hades in his chariot captured her, took her down into the underworld. So he married her, Hades married Persephone, they're living in the underworld. Meanwhile, Mother Demeter up on earth is bereft. She doesn't know what happened to her daughter. She didn't know where she went. She wasn't there when Persephone got sucked into the underworld. And so she's looking all around, talking to all the gods, trying to figure out where is my daughter. Eventually through some other stories, she discovers what happened. But while she is looking and trying to find Persephone, she becomes bereft and she tells all the gods including Zeus, her husband, I'm not going to do anything. Mother Earth is going on strike because I can't connect with my beautiful daughter Persephone. So the Earth became barren. Plants were growing. People were starting to feel hunger in their lives because Demeter was so bereft that she was no longer connected with her daughter. Through some conversation with a couple of other gods, Demeter had contact with these, these uh, immortals. She was able to learn of what happened and how her daughter had been taken down into the underworld. And she went to her husband, Zeus, and said, you know, as long as this is the case, I'm on strike. Nothing's going to happen. The mortals will die because I'm not going to continue taking care of the crops. They won't have anything to eat. And Zeus realized he had to do something about it. So through his work and also several other god gods, they went back down into the underworld and made a deal with Hades that Persephone could come back up and be with her mother. But right before Persephone was to go back up to be with her mother, of which she was super excited, sneaky Hades gave her a taste of a few pomegranate seeds. The story is six little juicy pomegranate seeds she ate right before she got in the chariot to head back up to see Mother, Mother Earth. Well, she got back there and Demeter was extremely happy. She was happy and, and all of a sudden she's allowing things to grow. She's nourishing things and spring is happening. But she turns to her daughter and says, you know, tell me what, what how did this happen? And so Persephone tells her the story about seeing this beautiful flower and how looking at it and going to pick the Narcissus, she's sucked into the underworld to live with Hades and actually to marry him. And Demeter asks her, did, by any chance, did you eat anything? And she said, well, interesting you should ask because right as I was leaving, my husband Hades gave me these few little pomegranate seeds. Well, the story goes that Anyone who eats down in the underworld has to return to the underworld. And so this is where the, the, the transition is made that Persephone is going to live part of her life, part of every year down in the underworld with Hades and part of her year up with her mother, Demeter. And the story kind of, you know, on the basic story of it, it seems like a story about the transitions and cycles we see in nature. That when Persephone is in the underworld, it's fall and winter. And when Persephone gets to come back up and be with Demeter, it's spring and summer and the plants are flourishing and everything is being nourished by Mother Earth Demeter. So at one level, that's the element of the story. But as we look deeper at it, I was thinking about it, how we have these incredible cycles in our own life. You know, we live in a culture that has cycles. We live in a culture, I mean, if you think about even where the story originated and start looking back at ancient Greece, the cycles of these cultures that lived over time and then died, and then other cultures came and lived. And we right now, as a, as a, as a culture, are living through a cycle. And many of us would say that the part of the cycle that we're living in right now is where we're down. We're not in the time when things are growing. We're in the cycle where we're down in the underworld, where we've eaten the pomegranate seeds. And it's that time in the cycle when things are in the underworld and things in the outer are not growing. But this is a very powerful, and, and for me, as I look at this, I think it's a really extraordinary 
powerful story to look at at the level beyond the cycle of nature, the cycle of the culture we live in, the cycle of collective consciousness. We could look at that. And I, I'm not going to explore that with you, but you can explore that yourselves in terms of what's going on in the collective or relative to our consciousness. But if we look at it from the realm of how we understand in unity these different realms of consciousness, we come to understand that this realm of the underworld, the realm where Hades is, basically is the realm of the unconscious, or we could call it, Fillmore talks about it as the subconscious. It's that place where the things of the past live. It's the, it's the place inside of us where experiences from the past that are dead because they're not alive in the present moment, like the underworld is the place of the dead. We often, however, go to this place in consciousness. We go to this place of the past where memories and thoughts are dead, but we get them activated in our current present time. So thinking again of the level of consciousness of the unconscious or subconscious, Charles Fillmore connected the subconscious very much with our attachment to the body. He was all about connecting the subconscious to the body. He says, the subconscious is the memory mind. It's memory crystallized into function and form. It's the home of our habits, the storehouse of past thoughts and experiences. It carries on all the bodily functions and it is this active, and if we don't be, if we aren't conscious of what goes on in the subconscious mind, these processes, then the divine intelligence will not be available to us. We have to become conscious of these patterns and habits that are in the unconscious realm. And when we become conscious of them, when Persephone is able to come out from the underworld and we bring those thought patterns, those old habits, those attachments we have to the past, when we bring those out into consciousness, which is what is where Demeter lives, it's what's living and what's growing and what's thriving in our life. When we bring that out into consciousness, connecting it with the divine presence, the Christ presence, the higher consciousness, then we're able to be fully present and we're able to move into a place of spiritual growth and transition in our life. And I, I think it's a really powerful thing to be mindful of how we get sucked into these these patterns and habits that take us into the past, take us into old thinking, uh, the narciss narcissus. So think about this in your own life. When we become obsessed with ourselves, when we become obsessed with our own thinking, with our own habits, our own patterns, when our life is all about me, we can get sucked into believing things that are in the subconscious. We can get sucked into cycling in some of those old habits and old patterns that have been running our life and causing consequences that for most of us, we don't know how to get out of. So take a look at your own life and think about this for a minute. Are there things happening in your, in your life right now that are causing you distress because they're habits that just keep cycling through. You know, I, I heard conversations happening, you know, before we got on the call together, before the service started, and, and people were talking about loneliness, you know, the pattern of loneliness, the pattern of feeling disconnected in our life. That is something that we can feel in present time. And yet it's, it's built into something that happened to us when we, were, when we were young, when we were the young Persephone. In other words, Persephone is like, Persephone is like a child. Persephone is like that, that child that had something happen when she was very young and it got embedded as a memory within us. And so we get triggered by these things in our current daily life. 
and the experience of maybe being a child when you were left alone, when you, and you had nobody to take care of you, got lost in the grocery store, you thought your mother would pick you up from school and she did. These little kind of things that happen to us are still down there. They're down there. And they get triggered by an experience in present time. Maybe you, you know, wanted to talk to your child or you, you know, I wanted to talk to my son the other day and I kept getting disconnected. And it would be easy for me to start feeling like, oh, well, he doesn't really have time for me or he doesn't really, what do I, what, what does he want to say? That old kind of pattern of like not feeling like you matter is an old childhood thing. It's not the truth of who we are, but that's, that's what happens when we start focusing in on the self-obsession that, that we pick, we pick that flower, that narcissistic flower of self-obsession, thinking it's all about me. And we go into these old habits and patterns that are old memories that are dead. And what we're called to do is we're called to be present in every moment to the life-giving energy, the earth-giving energy, the bountiful growth energy of divine and divine mother. I mean, I love that Demeter is really representative of divine mother. This is about cycles of life. And I was thinking, you know, I was thinking about the connection, this is so old, these myths are ancient, but it's a myth about rebirth. It's a myth about resurrection. There was a place outside of Athens where for 2,000 years, people would go. It's called the Eleusian Mysteries. They created these rituals and these processes over a course of nine days, they did something in the spring and they did something in the fall. And it was a process that was created, like a, like a spiritual uh, initiation, a spiritual ritual in the same way, you know, we like the white stone that Elizabeth mentioned. That's a spiritual ritual that has, it has, you know, in this case, it has the stone, but it's giving us an inner experience to bring into the outer and thousands of years ago, people did these kind of rituals. In the fall, they did the, what was called the, the greater mysteries in the fall in September and October. And in the spring, the lesser mysteries. And people celebrated this coming out from the darkness, coming out of whatever was held inside of them and bringing themselves onto the journey of transformation and rebirth. These mysteries were very interesting. I mean, you could read about it in Plato. You could read about it. Cicero talked about it. Homer talked about it. They talked about this understanding that as a soul, we, we take many journeys in our lifetime. And the journey that we're on right now, I think, is an extraordinary, powerful process. All of us who are unitics and unity students, we have such an amazing way to understand what's happening in our life right now. You know, we can understand the sense of literally there's, it's nothing in the outer, has nothing to do with the outer. It's all about an inner experience. It's about a resurrection and a rebirth of that. Fillmore would talk about it as the Christ consciousness, that, that presence of love, the presence of connection, the presence of being true to who we really came here to be as spiritual beings with the, with the physical body. The journey of the soul is this journey, literally the journey that Persephone took. We take that journey over and over. And for many of us, it's a, it, it, we take it daily, multiple times over in our day. We, we find ourselves down in a place where we're almost wallowing in old memories, old belief systems, old patterns that we've gotten caught in. And what we're called to do is we're called to come back bring ourselves back up to this moment, to this present moment, and feel the power and the connection that the divine has given us of higher consciousness, of conscious awareness, and of super conscious power, the Christ consciousness. And we're called to do that as we connect into the stillness of who we are, as we're connecting beyond those old habits and thought patterns that dwell in the past that are, that are literally dead knowing that moment to moment we have this resurrecting power 
the Christ presence is available to us, redemptive, resurrecting power. And while this is not the concept of Christianity, they don't talk about it like this, it's the same journey, the journey that we're all on day to day. So I really invite you to take a look and see, are there, are there areas in your life where you just get pulled into old patterns? Are there certain, certain patterns that you are telling yourself about who you are moment to moment, that you're not good enough, you don't have enough, you know? And to be able to bring ourselves back into the fullness of who we are moment to moment, back into the place of living on earth with the Christ presence, with the, the presence of Demeter, this mother earth energy that is always connected into the heaven and earth connecting us in physical body in this moment in time. And we're invited to do that, whether we're reading a story that Charles Fillmore gives us, whether we're hearing a story that somebody's telling us about their life and how challenging it is right now, we're able to really see what those challenges are as part of our spiritual journey, as part of the journey in growth and consciousness, because it's all about our consciousness. So I invite you, can we take a few minutes right now just to move into a place of stillness? So I invite you to close your eyes if you would. As we open our hearts and minds to the divine presence of God within and without, we allow ourselves to see with the eyes of spirit and to feel with the heart what is happening in our life in this now moment. What is the experience of the body in this now moment? drawing awareness to the heart. We connect in with the deeper wisdom of the heart, the intelligence of the heart. And we ask the living spirit of truth, that higher consciousness, the Christ consciousness, to reveal to us what it is we need to know about our life in this now moment. Allow us to be in awareness of one pattern that we've been holding on to, a habit in consciousness that has kept us stuck, that has kept us repeating patterns that no longer serve us in our life, creating consequences in our relationships, consequences in our abundance and prosperity, consequences in our spiritual life. As we ask that higher consciousness of the Christ presence to reveal to us this one particular pattern in consciousness, we sit in the stillness and we feel as the body informs us in the silence and the stillness. We see with the eyes of God and feel with the heart of divine intelligence. Just as we see the consequences of our habits and consciousness, our patterns of behavior, the words we may be speaking, we also trust and know that through the powerful presence of God, through the Christ presence within, the deepening awareness we have of these very simple patterns in consciousness 
can pull us out, can pull us out from lower consciousness, from that underworld of the past, from old thinking and old habits, and bring us out into the light of day so that we can feel and know the power of the growth in spirit that is happening moment to moment in each of us, so that we can feel a sense of being reborn in our inner awareness. And we can feel the power and the presence of these divine cycles moving in and through our life, throughout our days and weeks. And feel the blessing as we acknowledge this, giving thanks for the powerful presence and deepening understanding of these cycles in our life and the gift of our unity teachings. And we say, thank you, thank you, thank you for unity of Santa Rosa, for the blessings of this community, that may, we may be part of a community that supports one another in spiritual growth and in the growth of humanity's consciousness. We say, thank you, thank you, thank you, God. And as you're able, gently bring your awareness back into your body. Gently, when you're ready, open your eyes and come back to this beautiful community. So we give thanks for the blessing of the cycles that flow in and through our lives. We give thanks for the power of community, for the power and blessing of love that connects us heart to heart, mind to mind. And we feel the gift as we see deeply into ourselves during this time. And as we give of ourselves from a place of love, patience, joy, and gratitude. We say thank you, thank you, thank you, God, for this community, the unity of Santa Rosa. <laughs>